Welcome back to Shelby on Safari. Today we are going into the world of evolutions. That's right, Chaz. The video you requested and have been waiting for ever so patiently is finally here. We are focusing on Eevee, the evolution Pokemon, and looking at some real world animals that do something similar. But before we do, if you're new here and you want to learn all about animals in pop culture, the wild, and in captivity, be sure to hit that subscribe button and make that bell go ding so you can be the first to see all the new content. Now, let's get started. And my helper today is the one and only Maui. Eevee, the evolution Pokemon, first introduced in generation one. This normal type Pokemon may seem cute and fluffy on the outside, but in the inside it has an unstable genetic makeup. The Pokedex entries for Eevee have evolved throughout the years, ranging from Pokemon Yellow's definition that its genetic code is unstable, so it could evolve in a variety of ways. There are only a few left alive. To the latest in Pokemon Sword, stating it has the ability to alter the composition of its body to suit its surrounding environment. Currently, Eevee has eight different evolutions. Eevee even has a Gigantamax form, which was shown in the Galar region in the latest Pokemon Sword and Shield games. In fact, Eevee has the most evolved forms of any other Pokemon. If you're fans of the anime, you may know that Eevee has appeared on the teams of many a main character, including Mei, Serena, and my favorite, Lana. Eevee has a total of nine signature moves. This is the most signature moves that any Pokemon has. Look how cute it is. It's so fluffy. According to Bulbapedia, Eevee actually wasn't entirely based on one distinct animal, although one of the creators did say that it reminds him of a fluffy cat or dog-like creature. But that is not the animal that we will be focusing on. Instead, let's head over to the Galapagos Islands. On the islands of the Galapagos, there are 15 species of birds, collectively known as Darwin's finches. Charles Darwin is kind of like the equivalent of one Professor Oak, one might say. When Charles Darwin was sailing on the Beagle and landed upon the islands of the Galapagos, he was struck by the biological diversity he found on the island. In particular, it was the variation of the bird's beak shape and size that caught his attention. Seeing just how different, but also how similar these finches were, gave way to the principle of natural selection. And to use Darwin's finches as an example of this, a few million years ago, one species of finch migrated to the Galapagos Islands from the mainland of either Central or South America. From just this one migrant species would come at least 13 different species of finch, for they would evolve from that single common ancestor. This process, from which one singular species gives rise to multiple different species that fulfill an ecological niche, is called adaptive radiation. But before we dive in into adaptive radiation and how that's similar to Eevee's evolutions, I thought we would focus on a single species that some scientists believe might actually be the closest living link to this ancient ancestor of the Darwin's finches. And its name might surprise you. Meet the dull colored grass quit. Yeah, you heard me right dull colored grass quit. Gosh, some scientists can be really brutal sometimes. This bird is found in Northwest Argentina, Bolivia, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, and Western Venezuela. Both males and females are distinctively drab in color, for they are entirely medium brown and with no distinctive markings. Their main diet consists mostly of seeds, 
in particular, grass seeds. Back in 2001, a group of scientists released a paper which stated that they believed that the dull colored grass quit was the nearest living relative of the Darwin's finches. They hypothesized that the initial adaptive radiation from this group apparently occurred on the Caribbean islands and then spread to Central and South America, from which the ancestors of the Darwin's finches went over to the Galapagos approximately 2.3 million years ago. Not quite as quick of a change as just using a water stone or making a curry in the Galar region, eh? So again, the definition of adaptive radiation is the process in which one species gives rise to multiple species that exploit different niches. So in the case of Darwin's finches, it is believed that the one common ancestor was a ground-dwelling, seed-eating finch. But because the islands of the Galapagos are so diverse, the finches had to respond accordingly in order to survive. Their beaks adapted in both size and shape to eat different diets, such as seeds, insects, nectar, and leaves. So the ecological niches exert the selection processes to push the populations of birds in various directions. More recently, with climate change affecting the food supply in the Galapagos, certain finches have lived or died depending on which species beak structure was more suited or best adapted for the most abundant food, aka natural selection. So how can this concept of adaptive radiation be brought into the Pokemon world with Eevee? Well, Let's first look at Jolteon, the lightning Pokemon. Eevee evolves into Jolteon when you expose it to a thunderstone. But let's take a trip down memory lane to good old Kanto. More specifically, the Kanto power plant. This power plant was abandoned years ago, although some of its machines still work, and it is in with electric type Pokemon. I do remember coming across many things that I thought were item balls, but alas, they were Voltrog or Electrodes. So what does adaptive radiation mean specifically in terms of Jolteon? Well, Jolteon's prickly fur is made of electrically charged needles. These needles generate negatively charged ions, thus creating a sparking noise when it moves. Jolteon also has an electricity generating organ in its lungs. And say Eevees were wandering around the power plant, it could get quite sketchy with all the electrical discharge that could be happening. Thus, Jolteon has static electricity in its fur that amplifies the low level electricity generated by its cells, thus allowing it to discharge 10,000 volt lightning bolts. Pretty impressive, eh? Now let's head south of Pallet Town to Cinnabar Island. Cinnabar Island is home to a large volcano, which would be apt for a flame Pokemon, maybe one as such by the name of Flareon. In fact, in generations two and four, after the events that happened in generation one and three, we find that Cinnabar's volcano actually erupted destroying everything, and the only thing left is a Pokemon Center. It is said that Flareon can be found around volcanoes, which again lends itself quite nicely to adaptive radiation. Flareon naturally has a high temperature. This is caused by its internal flame sac. Flareon stores and heats inhaled air in this sac and then releases it as fire. If Flareon's body temperature does get too hot, 
Flareon will puff out its yellow fur around its neck to cool off. So what better way for an Eevee to evolve to survive on volcanoes, such as the one on Cinnabar Island, than to evolve into an Eevee that can handle the heat and even camouflage into the natural environment of a volcano. And now for my favorite of the original three evolutions, Vaporeon, the bubble jet Pokemon. Eevees that live by freshwater lakes or the ocean may need a way to get around and hunt for food. Therefore, adaptive radiation could be used in terms of evolving an Eevee into a Vaporeon with the help of a water stone. For we see when Eevee evolves into Vaporeon, not only do they get a really cool tail, but they get a white fin around their neck and three fins on its head. It's been said that Vaporeon's tail has been mistaken for mermaid tails in the past. Vaporeon is adapted for life on land as well as in the water, for they can still move around on their legs. However, it has developed to be more suited to the aquatic lifestyle, for its cell composition allows it to essentially melt into water. This allows Vaporeon to camouflage perfectly when swimming through the water to capture its prey, fish Pokemon. However, what happens when you go to Johto and you come across Umbreon or Espeon? They do live in the same area, however, they evolve into different forms based on the time of night. This could be an example of sympatric speciation. Sympatric speciation is the evolution of a new species from a surviving ancestral species while both continue to inhabit the same geographic region. Espeon evolves from Eevee when leveled up with high friendship during the day or morning. Its velvety lilac covered fur is said to be able to pick up minute changes in the air, thus allowing it to predict the weather. Most distinctively though, they have a small red gem in the center of their forehead, which helps boost their psychic power. And then of course in Johto, you also can get Umbreon, the moonlight Pokemon. While Espeon seems to be diurnal, Umbreon is certainly nocturnal, because that's how you get an Eevee to evolve into one. You have to level up with high friendship at night, and Umbreon is suited for the nocturnal life. Its yellow markings glow at night or when it's excited. Umbreon has perfect camouflage for hiding in the darkness and then leaping out to surprise prey. However, when it does leap out, its markings do burst out in the yellow color, which probably is quite scary. Leafeon has a quite unique adaptation as well. When Eevee is leveled up next to a moss rock or shown a leaf stone in later generations, it evolves into Leafeon. Leafeon's cellular structure is similar to plants. In fact, they can photosynthesize. They can get their energy this way instead of by eating. And it's no surprise then that Leafeon prefers to live in lush forest. Of course, then there's Glaceon, which Eevee evolves into if you're near an ice rock or have an ice stone in later generations. It should come as no surprise that Glaceon is capable of freezing its fur into sharp needle-like icicles. Glaceon can control its body temperature at will. This enables them to freeze the moisture in the air around them. But what about the fairy type Sylveon? Well, this is where I think humans could come into play. After all, Sylveon can only evolve from Eevee with high friendship or high affection, depending which game you're playing. Maybe humans help select the Eevees down into having such big eyes and the big ribbons. After all, Sylveon will wrap these feeler ribbon things around its trainer, which allows it to read their feelings. Eevee can evolve into eight different types of Pokemon. Each are specifically adapted to live and thrive in a certain type of environment, whether that be in the water with a really cool tail or alongside humans and be able to read their emotions. 
like Sylveon can. Eevee can certainly exemplify adaptive radiation, from which one species gives rise to multiple species that exploit different niches. Darwin's finches did the same thing, adapting to the different island environments and diets on each of those islands in order to best survive, whether by eating insects, seeds, fruit, or even cactus. It's great to see really key biological concepts being used in the Pokemon world. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new today, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below which Pokemon you want to see featured next. Have a great day. Bye!